Welcome, everyone. I'm Justin Silverman of the New England First Amendment Coalition. Thank you for joining us for another 30-Minute Skills. As a reminder, all of our 30-Minute Skills are available at nefac.org slash 30-Minute Skills. They include data cleaning, data visualization, privacy law, Microsoft Excel basics, how to diversify sources, and how to protect yourself as a journalist, among many other topics. You'll also find at nefac.org a growing list of upcoming presentations and events focused on the First Amendment and journalism. Nearly all of them are free and open to the public, so please check them out and consider joining us. Today, we'll be discussing the document state of mind. As you'll learn today, reporting with this mindset will not only help you locate difficult to find information, but it'll also strengthen your stories with more context and data. We have a lot to cover and not a lot of time, so let's get started. Joining us today is Jennifer McKim, Deputy Investigative Editor with the GBH News Center for Investigative Reporting. Jennifer, all yours. Great. Hi. Thanks very much, Justin. Hello, everybody. What a pleasure to be here and talk about something that that I care so much about. So uh, this is great. Um, well, thanks so much, Justin, for having me here. This is really great, and this is a really important topic. I, um, as Justin said, I am I work at G GBH News Center for Investigative Reporting, but I've also taught for about a decade at Boston University, and I really believe that the document state of mind is is really the first and foremost and most important thing that I always have taught my students. Um, and this is not something in any way that I made up. This is something that um, comes from. Um, um, the investigative reporters and editors organization, which I'm a member of, and I hope all of you join at some point, ire.org. I just wanted to start uh, when we're thinking about the document state of mind, that this is a very key theme for investigative reporters and just start with uh, the idea of what is investigative reporting when you're thinking about what you're doing. And this is sort of a dry description, but I think it's really important when we're thinking about this work. The reporting through one's own initiative and work product of matters of importance to readers, viewers, or listeners. In many cases, the subjects of the reporting wish the matters under scrutiny to remain undisclosed. And this is what, when we're talking about the document state of mind, that you are looking for records that can often tell stories that other people don't have. So through one's own initiative and work product is very, very key. Uh, what we do as investigative reporters, we can do, and as just general, really strong reporters, we can uncover systemic failures, expose government or corporate corruption, hold the powerful accountable, reveal injustice and detail waste. These are the things that we do. And again, you can use this type of document state of mind for the investigative reporting that takes longer, but every daily story should have the same kind of idea. Um, the theme, as I said, does not come from me. It was coined by two veteran Pulitzer Prize winning journalists, Donald Barlett and James Steele, uh, really uh, brilliant people who were involved with IRE that created this idea about um, always thinking about the documents. Whenever anybody tells you anything, whenever you have a journalistic question, you always think, what records are there that, that can prove it? Give me the idea, like, what is the record? And also to have the data state of mind, it's progressed now, so documents and data. What are the numbers that can help tell my story? It will make you a smarter reporter. You'll be able to, you'll be able to report with more authority than if you're just following what people give you. And that's really key to being a good journalist. So what is the idea about a document state of mind? It's that everybody, every person, every organization has a long document trail and that our job is to follow it. So that when you have an investigative question or you have a daily report, you start thinking immediately, what are the records that can help me tell my story? Um, and they start from birth and they go till death. And I just wanted to start with a birth certificate. So what we're going to do now is just kind of look at all the records that you can think of when you're writing a story. Every story I do, I just start to think, what are the records? Where can I find them? How can I tell this story? Bring it to somewhere new. And I'm not just reporting about what people tell me. So here's a birth certificate of Barack Obama. As you remember back in the day, there was... Uh, there was there was there was challenges to where he was from. Um, here you can see through the record that he was born in Honolulu. That his mother was a white eighteen year old woman. Her father was a twenty five year old uh, African man. 
Um, and you can see where he where he was born and who was the actual doctor. These are all amazing records and details that you can use in your reporting. And those reporters actually you know, get the certificate then could call and talk to the doctor to prove these types of things. So when you get a record, it, it opens up a world that at once was much darker. It sort of gives you this ability to tell stories that you weren't able to before and speak with authority and not just say she said or he said, but according to the records that I have. So again, as a journalist, whether it's your daily beat day of the, you know, someone sends you out or whether it's a longer project you're thinking of, you start with a question and then you say, what are the records that can help me tell my story? Um, who has them? You know, where can you find them? A big question is who regulates? Uh, if, if, you're if you're looking at an organization, a nonprofit, a business, a school, um, if you're looking at a doctor or a lawyer, who are the people who licenses and regulates them? There are records there that can help you tell your story. How do you get them? Will you file a FOIA, Freedom of Information Act? I'm sure most of you are aware of that. Is it just available on the website? Generally check that first. Who can I ask? So these are the things when you first have your question, where are those records? And it should be the immediate thing you do and not just say, you know, quoting somebody else because you never know. And the other thing is not quoting other newspapers. You want the primary sources to tell your stories. And that way, you know, you have the right information. Um, so there are private records and there are public records. They're both available for telling stories. Um, and we could, and I'm sure many of you have spent time filing FOIAs and public records. But for example, school records, that's a really interesting thing when you're talking about someone, but those are private and hospital records are private. Um, college degrees, for example, if you want to write about someone and they say they graduated from a university, you can call the university to confirm it. And you should, because people don't always tell the truth. The thing about private records, though, too, is often they are records that you can get just by asking. Let's say you're writing about someone who's complaining about what happened to them in a hospital. So the hospital won't give you the records, but the person will. So just always thinking about all the documents that you can collect and then organizing them. When I, uh, back in the day, I used to organize them in big bins with sticky notes. Now I use Document Cloud, which I hope all of you use, which is an amazing online source for journalists. But either way, you're creating a whole pile of records that you got because you're looking for the primary sources and you have that document state of mind. Um, so when I start, I'm always sort of like, what, what are those documents I can start with? Legal records are very key um, when you're looking at a source, if it's whether it's someone who you have been told is a bad actor or someone who you believe is a good actor, what can you find online about them? Um, FBI, for example, you can get your own records on the FBI, or if you are um, looking to write about someone else, if you can prove that they are deceased, you can get their records also. Um, if you're looking for prisoners, you can find out where a prisoner is by this great service called VineLink, which is um, basically you can look for any state in the union and put in the name of a prisoner and you can find out where, if they're in, still incarcerated and where. So you could write them a letter or find the email now where you can email someone. I use VineLink all the time to just sort of, because I write a lot of criminal justice stories, to find out if the guy I'm writing about or the woman is still in prison and how I can reach them. Police records, obviously, this is like the, the journalism 101, but there are so many great police records that can lead you to stories, whether um, you're going to the police department to get or seeing what they have online day to day. A lot of times if they're in the middle of an investigation, you can't get them, but you can find them in court records. Key to telling stories. So for me, my favorite document is court records. Court records are amazing for so many reasons. One, um, it protects you from libel uh, and also, and, and, and there's so many things enriched in there. And the, the thing is to think about, it, it's not all just about criminal justice stories. You can have criminal justice stories. You can write about the courts, but you can also write about, find amazing stories about people who are being sued in court for small amounts of debts, domestic abuse cases, evictions. You can go to, you could find, go to the eviction um, housing court and write about evictions by looking at those court records and human trafficking, which is a topic that I do. Whatever topic you have, you can la largely find court records that can help you tell stories that people, other people don't know about. Um, and 
there's just a plethora of different areas to go. So those of you who have spent time, and I met, if you were, you know, if I could see you, I'd ask you who's been to the courtroom and looked at court records. And I'm sure there's a lot of you already who have, but for the, the basics, the, there's either civil or criminal cases. So you can see whether someone is being sued by the government, sued by somebody, um, an, another person. Um, you can look through all the different types of court records, federal and local and state. I've found marriage and divorce records to be amazing places to find date information that maybe your sources don't want to talk to you about. Divorce records, I was just uh, at actually looking through a case of a story I was writing and you find out they have to put a lot of information if they're having a sort of a, a difficult divorce about their salaries, information. So these are great places or marriage. And in fact, I did another story where I was able to sort of show where this person got married, in what church, who their pastor was, and you get to create color and speak with more authority because you have the document in front of you. Bankruptcy filings also are really rich for that type of information. You can find out through, which is a federal record that you can find on the government site PACER. You can find records about how much, if someone files for bankruptcy, they have to show every single thing they own and every single person they owe money to. And that could be a rich area to tell story. Same with foreclosure filings, mortgage documents. I used to cover the real estate at the Boston Globe and, um, that is an area rich for documents when you're looking at um, people be, because real estate is something that is sort of the cornerstone of real estate is, is the power of the, the documents to prove what you own, to prove what you owe. And it's great for telling stories to find out who is buying the most foreclosures or who is struggling through them, who owes what. There's so much information out there for people. And you don't have to be a real estate attorney or reporter to do that. Um, it's really about looking at that information all the time to see who owes what kind of money, what how what is the value of their home if you're doing an investigative profile. So quick overview for court records, go to the court and read them. Anytime you're writing a story, um, first see if you can find their name in a court record and then bother, take the time to drive over there and walk through it and read the records. File a uh, Freedom of Information Act with the district attorney's office. There are more records that they have that often are not in the court records and that can provide more information, 911 calls, fo photos, et cetera, that can really enrich your journalism. Request court transcripts. So what they said in the court documents themselves. Back in the day, it was court reporters who did this and you would have to pay them specifically for them. There's still some of that overlap, but a lot now they are uh, obtained in court audio. Um, you can find it that way in Massachusetts for $15. You can get a trans you can get a court audio of a case which can really enrich your story. Uh, as I said, pacer.gov is a great place to look at federal court records, including bankruptcy cases and all federal cases. It's expensive. If your organization has a subscription, use that. If you do it, use it um, as little as you can, but it is very useful to get information from your desk. MassCourts.org for local cases, as I said, all the different ways, housing, uh, superior court, district court, all the different ways you can find stories for your cases. And then also, if you um, really don't have the time to drive two hours to a court courthouse, call the attorney, the defense, defense attorneys, advocates, or prosecutors. Sometimes they'll hand you records, and that is very helpful. Um, you'll never know what you find. So here's a picture of one of my interns at the time. We went to look at a court record. Usually they're a small little file. We found all these boxes on only one case and spent two weeks reading through them. So for me, it's always exciting to get in my car, get on the train, walk to a courthouse and see what those stories can tell us. Um, and you want to ask who regulates. So as you know, for government records, uh, what makes it public is if in some way it touches the government. If it was if it was created by a government office, whether state, local, or federal, um, and whether you have a public or a private organization, if they are sending something to the government, it's something you might have access to. So think about that when you're writing about a lawyer, or a doctor, nail salon, special education schools. There's all these ways that you say, okay. 
what information can I get from this organization? And some of the really strong ones are health and safety violations. I've done stories on childcare, special education, health and safety violations. You can find out which is the most troubling school, which is maybe the best school, which doctors have had problems with medical negligence or been punished for being a bad actor. These are all things that you just say to yourself, what is the record? I've been told I'm supposed to do this lovely profile on this organ on this guy, but I'm going to, because I, I'm a real sort of investigative reporter in the end, I'm going to make sure that I've done my homework so that I'm not writing some puff piece about somebody who's really problematic, or you just even want to check out your own doctor before you go to them. So um, as you're aware, government, um, if anyone who works for the government that, that their paycheck is information to the public, most states have something like this, open checkbook sites, which are very interesting for providing information. Um, I looked up Charlie Baker. You can see here he made $185,000 last year. They paid him through January of this year when he um when he, he left his office. Great information that you can find. There's so many different rich pieces of info that you can write stories about through these types of sites. For example, um, which, which department in the state has spends the most money? In this case, it's the University of Massachusetts. Who is the most highly pay, paid person in the state. And you can see right here that the highest paid person in Massachusetts is the head basketball coach at UMass making almost $400,000. So these are all documents easily accessible online now. You used to have to ask for it, but now you just go online, find the information. Similarly with federal uh, employee salaries, these things are also available online most of the time. If you can't find it, you're allowed to ask because these are uh, do public documents. You're a journalist, you should know who the local folks, how much they're getting paid. That's our right as taxpayers and journalists. Campaign contributions. If you can, what's interesting is you can find out not only who, if you're writing about someone who is running for a campaign, but also a person who has a lot of money or a business, how much are they spending? If Are they giving money to every different government agency or et cetera? So Open Secrets is a great site for looking for this information. I just popped in Ayanna Presley. Um, you can see that the top contributor in last fiscal year was the was a firm Wiley and Associates. Um, the, the majority of people or the biggest industry that gave her money were people who were retired. This is um, just one of the teeny pieces of info that you can get a shot at by looking through Open Secrets. But there's a million stories in all these types of info. Um, you're writing about businesses. You think you go to the state corporate database. I always go to the state corporate database when I'm writing about businesses, and you can find out who are the people who are, I put in the name of someone who I was recently investigating related to a story I did, but um, basically you go to the Massachusetts corporate database, you find out um, who are their main people in the organization, where do they, wh where is they, their spot, where they are, when do they begin, all that information is very helpful. Um, a lot of businesses report to the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, you can um, find incredibly rich data and stories about businesses that you're writing about. Nonprofits. Now, nonprofits, they don't have to report all these this information to the state, but they do have to report certain things to the IRS. And if you haven't spent some time in GuideStar, please do. It's a great way to learn information about organizations that don't generally have to tell us a lot. I just plunked, um, you don't have to, by the way, um, it's a free service for the most part. Um, but you need to sign up. So I plunked in Harvard University and basically you get all this information about the top paid people in the nonprofit, et cetera. So for example, at Harvard, Lawrence Backow, who is the outgoing president of Harvard makes over a million dollars a year. And in just his salary, he makes over nearly 200,000 other additional costs. So that 
is really fun stuff. And besides that, um, so if you're ever writing about a nonprofit, make sure you have that document state of mind to look at what they call the 990s here on GuideStar. There's some other places to find them, but very helpful information. You can also find conflicts of interest they have. I've written multiple stories using these records. So have many, many other journalists. Um, so take advantage of thinking about it. Um, there's so many government resources when you're thinking about documents and data. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has these amazing sites, Wonder and Whiskers, where you can find out, you know, the rate of suicide or, or obesity or whatever it is. And you can break it down by race and county and geographic areas. All these types, types of things can really help you build strong, smart stories that you're being able to do with your own work product, as I could go back to talking about. Um, so the internet, as we uh, know, is mostly forever, but sometimes people do try to disappear things. If you haven't looked at the Wayback Machine, this is a fun internet um, service where basically you can put in a website of any website and see what it looked like at different time periods because there were screenshots. If you look 20 years ago, there's less of them, but nowadays you can pretty much get it day by day. This is a, also a really great thing if you're writing a story about an organization and they changed their website immediately after you ask about someone who works that works there, you can go back to the Wayback Machine and help yourself. So another way to think about how documents can help build and strengthen your stories. So we started from birth, we end in death, and um, death certificates are another very rich area to tell um, to tell stories. This is a uh, particular death certificate I got of a little girl named Maya Berry. You can look here; she was five months old when she died. Um, you can get rich information about where they died. Um, who were their parents or who were they connected to? Uh, where was the cemetery? All those types of things can be very helpful when um, you're telling a story. So for me, I was writing about these, these kids who I couldn't get pictures of, wasn't able to talk to their parents because it was a controversial story, but I was able to find her cemetery and her gravestone because I found that on the death certificate. So it's that always that idea, how will my story be enriched by the documents and data that I can find through all those ways. Now, this is just like a small, teeny little touch of different places that you can go to to, um, to, to look for the records. And I think the most important thing to end this with is, is thinking about um, what not that there's so as you know an arena of places to find information but to know that this is something i want to find out ask specialists what information is out there when i'm writing this story and how can you help me one question really? jennifer okay. um, someone asking about uh, information about private organizations so we know through all the resources that you just shared with us wealth of information about public organizations. Um, what about private companies, for example, and other private organizations uh, like insurance companies or pharmacy benefit managers? Uh, where might you guide us to get information about those types? Right. So, well, that's the thing about trying to figure out where those private organizations touch the government because they have to in the United States in some way. So are they being are they being watched for health and safety? But like if something happens at a ski resort, they probably have to report this like an adverse event or something like that in a hospital to some department in in the state and to the federal government. Are they um, do they have to file certain taxes? What do they have to do for their own um, building? So it's just really trying to figure out which of the areas where they touch the state and then you can find it and basically talk to the experts around to say like what are the records they have to file and then you ask for them and that is sort of the best way to do it so I can't say specifically but I think if you have that idea that everybody in some way touches the government we all do and that there are some ways that you can find rich stories from finding that information out great thank you so much Jennifer appreciate yeah. all of this guidance super helpful. You give us a lot to consider, a lot to digest. Uh, and before we go, I want to give a big thanks to everyone for joining us today. If you found today's class helpful in your work in any way, please consider becoming a sustaining member 
of NEFAC at nefac.org slash join. Your annual support is what helps us provide classes just like this one. So and I've thank just you left again. My, I've left my information. Um, for anybody who has any questions, wants to reach out, I'm always available. I just love sort of trying to figure out how to, how to break through that wall and write that story. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you again, Jennifer. Thank you to everyone. We'll see you next month for our next 30-Minute Skills. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you.